Hello everybody, hope you did okay and welcome to Bushy Park, the spiritual home of Park Run. Now, now you don't actually run in this bit of the park, but this is where the Crescent Tree Cafe is. So if you've ever done the Bushy Park Run, then this is where you may land up afterwards. Right, but today I'm going to be talking about the Endorphin Pro 2 here. This is in the Riveri colourway. I think that's because of all the purple and blue, not the checkerboard stuff there. So what I was primarily wanting to see is whether the Endorphin Pro is any different to the Endorphin Pro 1. So I put the version 1 shoe on my left foot and the newer one on my right. And having done a little run around the park here with version 1 and version 2 on my feet and a version 2 run the other day quite hard, I'd have to say that there's very little difference at all. So perhaps you could stop watching the video now and if you can pick up the version 1, cheaper than you can the version 2 then maybe that's the way forward but we'll do another little run do a bit of filming with myself doing a few sort of strides and stuff and then we'll have a look a more detailed look at the actual differences and almost do a spot the difference competition i think to be honest this is a bit of a cheat from salconi i think there may be an upper update for some people it did feel like to me when i put the v2 on it felt fitted a bit wider but it's the same foam it seems to be the same feel maybe it's just a way of making youtubers pay 190 pounds so that they can tell you exactly the same as the first version so <laughs> there you go right let's get on with this run then and see if i can actually detect anything worth talking about that's actually different here okay so here's the two shoes on my feet version one here on the left and version two on the right so the first thing i kind of notice straight away is that the fit of the version one seems to be a bit narrower because definitely you see that I've got the eyelets further away than here. When I first put on the V2, the first thing I did was tie these up quite tight. And you see there to the point that there's very near to touching. Whereas there, that's sort of a much more sort of good fit for me. So looking at the difference between the uppers, well, it does seem to be fairly similar. There's clearly a bit slightly different configuration of where the little perforations are there. It does feel slightly different across the toe box here. It feels a bit firmer around the top here, whereas this is just a bit sort of flappier, I would say. Maybe that might impact your fit, a bit like in the Rebel 2 that I mentioned the other day with the reinforcement there, but I've got a nice sum width there in the, both of these shoes, so I'm not having any issues at all. In terms of the tongue, they're both still a gusted tongue, which I'll show you when I take the ones off in a moment. But you've got this little flap here on the new one. There's almost sort of like a sort of a semi pull tab. And then you've got this little bit here, which I'm not actually using, which presumably allows you to put your laces up, thread them through. I'm not sure that it's serving a great deal of purpose otherwise, where well, that one there is almost a bit further up, actually, doesn't it? You can see they're still there. But again, as you see, I notice I haven't been using that one. What I've also noticed, there's one less eyelet on the new version. Although we can do, both do the double knot in the new version there and in the old version there, in the original version we've got one, two, three, four, five, six eyelets, excluding the double knot one. But we've actually lost one in version two, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. And instead you've got this thing to sort of pull them in, which I guess maybe it actually allows you to pull them in tighter. But for me, I need to pull them in tighter just to get them on my feet. So one thing about this area near the Pheasantry Cafe is quite a lot of good props for doing shoe reviews. They've got these natural trees here to rest up again. So here we are, the two shoes from the rear, version two now on the left, version one on the right. So a slight difference here. We've kind of lost the stitching of between the two parts of the, the rear here. It's been rather tidied up. So we've just got this one little line now and it's actually telling you what type of foam we've got at the back here, Power Run PB, I think it is, whereas there it's just blank. The stripes here have changed to just a more sort of a checkered line. And again, you've got this little bit here, which again, I'm not entirely sure what that's doing, whereas you don't have that here. Maybe it's just a bit of tidying up of the stitching maybe behind that. If we look at the two shoes from a side on view, I'm really not seeing any great difference there at all. I don't think there is, certainly when I've just been running around. I mean, obviously we've got a different colorway here and um, you've got it's like a two-tone colorway now in the new version whereas the old version here was just a single a layer of black with a greeny base now we've got the white base but i think fundamentally that's just still the same obviously we've got endorphin pro 2 there whereas the original one endorphin pro with no one on obviously if we look at the rear of the two shoes, we've got the version 2 on the left and version 1 on the right and looks to be absolutely identical. 
So looking at the tongs for, without my feet in, it does seem to be pretty similar. It's got this bit here, which is sort of actually loose now. Maybe that's just to help you to get the shoe on, whereas that was stitched down before. Definitely got a gusseted tongue there. Quite a nice thin racing tongue, not much to that at all. But to me, that looks pretty much the same, I'd say. So it would appear from my test runs here that this shoe is pretty much the same. In fact, I think if this is an update or an improvement, I'm really struggling to know what the difference is. I have seen a few reports where people reporting bad lockdown in the first version. And maybe if you've got a wider foot, the slightly wider fitting in the version two may appeal. But to me, actually running around, I really can't detect any difference. And I don't think there's going to be any performance difference between the one and the two. When my quad issue settles down a bit and I can get back to sort of a normal pace, I hope to do a bit of a shoe off featuring the next present to the Endorphin Pro V2 and see if there's actually any difference in performance. But I think it's going to be highly unlikely. So some very minor updates here. And it's almost a bit of a cheat to say that this is an update. I think, you know, you'd be, you're thinking if you're paying £190 again, if you've already got the shoe, then I think to be nice, you're just wasting your money unless you've got some particular fit issues with the first version. So I hope you appreciated this little look at version two of the Endorphin Pro versus version one and hope it makes you decide whether you think you need to go out and buy version two if you've already got version one. Well, I was also say that I've done about 60 miles in version one, so they're definitely good to go for a lot, lot longer yet. And version two looks like it won't be any different in terms of the longevity of it. I'll probably get these to around about 200 miles eventually. I do rather use them for tempo runs rather than races, but uh, maybe one day on a low key park when, something, when they come back, maybe even in Bushy Park, could actually test them out and see how they feel. I was always thinking the Endorphin Pro is a good shoe. And plus it's my favourite non-Nike one actually. It's a very good shoe I find for doing tempo runs. Maybe less so in terms of actual races. I just feel like in my testing it just shows it's not quite as fast as the next percent. But I think it's actually a more comfortable shoe to wear for a, like tempos than say the Alpha Fly or the Adios Pro. So in some ways it's perhaps my second favourite carbon racer. So I hope you found this interesting and like and subscribe because I have noticed that most people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. I think that's fairly common, but if you can find your way to clicking the button, it'd be most appreciated. I'm starting to head towards 2,000 subscribers, so that would be a rather great target to make. And you kind of feel that you've at least sort of arrived as a YouTuber when you've got well past 1,000 on the way to your next thousand. So look forward to seeing you the next one then. Bye. Strides filmed. I've now got to exit the park before nine. I was gonna get locked in. Right, see you next one then. Bye.